Uh, you know, real happy for our team. I mean, it's uh, this time of the year, you know, what you want to do is, you know, play as hard as you can for 40 minutes and get an opportunity to play again. And I thought we showed uh, great resiliency. Weston made a heck of a run on us in the second half. Um, but I think our team showed great composure, you know, with great togetherness. And that's all I care about. You know, and we're doing those type of things, you know, then you have a chance to win basketball games. Um, you know, I just think they, um, you know, I give them a little bit of credit. Um, you know, uh, uh, Coach Christian may even mention in the halftime they're going to attack us inside. And, you know, I give them a little bit of credit. They did that, and, you know, um, we're just fortunate that we got together going in the, you know, mid to late second half, and we're able to get it under control and then finish it out strong. Well, can you talk about two things, DJ's first half and then his knack or ability to hit shots when the game's um, you know, seniors step up and make big time plays, and that's what he's known for. Um, the past, you know, four years he's been here at Ohio, and you know that's the thing we're going to have to do. Tomorrow's not going to be any different. You know, seniors going to have to step up and make plays, whether it's you know Evo rebounding, and, you know, having to get Trent Will out here tomorrow, Zeke Marshall. We're going to have to you know man up and try to get those rebounds and, and try to be tough on the interior, and seniors going to have to step up and get it done. Well, you know, I just know how important it is to our team, you know, when I get in there and rebound and not only me, but when Nick and, you know, Coop can get in there and rebound, you know, how much that means to Reg and John, because, you know, there's no secret. We're not very big. We're not a very big team. Um, we know that. That's why we know how important it is defending. And, and after we defend, we got to finish out of possession and rebound. So um, that's going to be, a, you know, another big thing against, Akron, you know, going up against Akron, you know, their big front line as well. And so I think we, if we can control the boards and, you know, and their field goal percentage, you know, we're in great shape. Yeah, we know if we can stop them and, uh, you know, get out in transition. We know if we get the first time rebound and, you know, uh, with, with Evo and John and Reg running the floor and, you know, Walt and Nick, you know, uh, knocking down shots and I'm pushing the ball. We just felt like if we got stops, and we could get them in transition. How did that, that first half run feel from your perspective? Was it like, did you feel like you were in the zone? Nah, I mean, I felt like, you know, we were exploiting uh, their defense, you know, pretty good, you know, because uh, we was getting a lot of stops, uh, in the, you know, in the, in the first half. <coughs> nah, I'm just, I just be out there playing, you know, uh, trying to, you know, do whatever my team needs me to do. You know, I'm just trying to step up and, you know, make big plays and, you know, just do whatever it takes to do to get the job done. What are your feelings about uh, It's only right, you know. Uh, we lost to them twice. You know, uh, we we gave the game. We feel like we gave the game away uh, both times. You know, we had pretty, you know, large leads on them. But, uh, you know, we got to come out and play. You know, for the championship, we, we know what they're gonna do and they know what we're gonna do. So. This is going to be the, you know, the best team. Plain and simple, how exciting is that? Getting that opportunity to play after the end, third time for a win. Oh, I mean, you know, uh, it's my last MAC game. You know, uh, you know, some of the seniors' last MAC game. You know, we love playing Akron. You know, it's always intense, and you know, it's, it's a slight rivalry, and uh, you know, it's a competitive. You know, if you if you're a competitor, you love to play in these type of games. Uh, I mean, if I, I knew if it didn't go in, you know, it probably wouldn't have been, a, you know, one of the best shots. But, uh, you know, I, I was wide open and uh, I stepped up and, you know, I knocked it down. You know, it felt good, you know, being able to, you know, uh, get up to five points, you know, when they were making that run. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, uh, you know, we got an older team, you know, we got a lot of experience. So, you know, we got to, we know, we know what to expect tomorrow and, and uh, we know how to deal with, you know, the adversity. We know Akron, you know, they're capable of going on, you know, a, maybe a 6-0 run, but it's just how we, you know, respond to the adversity. Uh, we're just going to come out and play, you know, we don't know what to expect, you know, uh, you know, Coach Keith Denbrough is a pretty good coach, so we, uh, 
we don't know what to expect. You know, we got to come out and execute our game plan. You know, coach is going to, you know, dial up a good game plan as always. So, you know, we got to come out and, you know, play Ohio ball. Yeah, I think that's part of basketball. I think, you know, if you if you tune in and watch games, leads go. I mean, this is March basketball. Everybody's fighting, you know, seniors trying to prolong their careers. And, you know, and just nobody rolls over. I mean, I'm not, you know, surprised by any of it. I mean, all you have to do is watch any game on TV. That's what happens. And that's what happens when you have good teams competing with one another. So, um, but DJ, you know, he's DJ. I mean, he makes huge plays. He's got a tremendous amount of confidence. One thing that's really, that really stood out to me, our whole team, as they made runs, we stayed together. Even every time out, every huddle, there was no panic. And earlier in the year when teams would make runs like that, we'd kind of come apart. And I think that's where our team has grown. That's why the team's playing better. Last night, these two teams played. Uh, Cooper only had one assist in the first half. What Western Michigan? Yeah, back in January. Um, what was the big difference having nine assists in the first half? That you no, we got a lot of open court plays. I mean, he's really good in the open floor. I mean, we got stops. We got rebounds. We were able to run. Um, a lot of them were break plays, open floor plays, and that's how we play. I mean, you know, he probably ended up with a seven or eight in that game, right? I think it's eight. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Well, neutral courts are is a lot different than playing in somebody's building. I mean, it's 100% different. You know what I mean? When... You know, we're 500 on the road, but we're seven and one in the league. And we're playing MAC teams. So, but neutral courts are different games because it's not a really a, a court advantage or a, or or an atmosphere advantage for either team. Although we had a great contingency today from Ohio, but it, it's just a different, totally different type of game. And, and and these guys are used to it. They've played a bunch of games on neutral courts and have had a lot of success. So, you know, so they have confidence in it. But anywhere in the country, I think you go. You know, if you look at road records, there's difference between playing a game, a neutral game, at Madison Square Garden and playing at Memphis. There's a big difference between those two places. Did you have an opportunity to see Akron at all earlier tonight? Of course. Do you have any thoughts on how their offense looked tonight? I have a lot of thoughts on them. <laughs> they're a good basketball team, guys. I mean, they're a good basketball team. They're a good basketball team with Alex Abreu. They're a good basketball team without him. I think they've got the best mid-major front court in the country. I don't consider Gonzaga a mid-major team anymore. You know, there's not many people putting seven-footers out there who can control the paint and a six-eight. Uh, player like Treadwell who, you know, kind of has his way with a lot of people. So that, that's, that's where it all starts for them. You know, so, and, you know, and obviously they have a, surround those guys with a lot of shooters, and that's what they did tonight. You know, obviously Alex Abreu uh, was, a, was, a, was a good player for them, but they, have, they play 11 guys. And, you know, they're a good basketball team with them. They're a good basketball team without them. You know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I've said this a million times, you know, I'm amazed by how coachable he is. You know, when, when everybody, when I took this job, everybody was like, well, how are you going to deal with him? And, and, and to be honest with you, he's the easiest guy on this team to coach. You know, I, from, we've just got a really close relationship. We have a lot of conversation throughout the game. I put a lot of trust in, in what, he's, what he tells me, the feedback he gives me, and I think it's, it's reciprocal. And, you know, he's a special player. You know, you look at him and, and – uh, he just has an old school vision feel for the game that's rare. So, Steve, so talk about Reggie saying why 12 points. That yeah, was pretty loud to me. Um, I mean, you know, Reggie, I thought Reggie did, I thought Reggie in the first 20 minutes was the best interior defense he's played all year. I thought he made Winnington work hard for every catch. He kept him off the backboard, um, finished around the basket, ran the floor very well. And then, you know, we probably played him too many minutes. He played 31 minutes. I thought he was a little tired at the end. But, you know, for our team, he's our only interior presence. So we, we have to, you know, when we get jump shot happy, we have to kind of put him back in so we can get the ball inside. And on that same note, Coach, uh, Nate Hutchinson is in here earlier saying, you know, the best offense is a good defense. I thought that was kind of the key to your guys' first half. I agree. Yeah. And, you know, for us, we've got to guard. We've got to we have the ability to turn some people over. We turn them over a little bit in the first half. We've got to rebound the basketball so we can get out and run. Yes. Yeah. When you took over a team that had so many parts back from a team that went so deep in the tournament last year and stuff, what's just your general approach to get them back to this kind of position? Well, it's not easy, obviously, you know, because uh, when you have that many seniors, too, there's it's a lot of different things. You know, seniors think, look at the game differently. For the first time, 
you know, when you, when you accomplish what they accomplished, you know, the biggest fight is, is for them to remember how they got there. And all of a sudden, now these guys turn and become seniors. And seniors naturally have a little bit of a step towards the future, just naturally, which, you know, because that's when it's the first time it really hits them. That, so you're juggling a lot of different things. So um, just a lot of communication, constant communication. But I will say that senior class set the tone for at least their ability to trust what we're saying. You know, and I think that they had a little bit of an under, you know, just a lot of from the beginning. And it wasn't always easy, obviously, but but uh, but their maturity, I think, has helped us grow. And I think what happens is, as they start buying in, and having some individual success, and then some collective success, it becomes a non-issue. Have you seen snippets of what made it special last year? Do you see it now? I mean, uh, like tonight, when things got tight, maybe. Um, there's always moments, you know. There's always, you know. Let's be honest. I mean, there's every coach, every team, and I'm sure John last year. There's moments where you say, "Oh, that's I could see it." Then there's moments where you say, "How the heck did that ever happen?" Watching what I'm watching. So, but our, you know, it's the one thing about this team is they have a great belief. You know what I mean? They have a great belief in one another. They have a great belief in in their ability to win, and, and uh, you know, and and obviously it's going to be a huge challenge tomorrow night. Players talked about being smaller team. Mm-hmm. True. I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, obviously, you know, one guy can't – I don't think – you know, one guy hasn't beaten us. He hasn't beaten us. He's going to do what he does. The good players play well. The thing that's beat us the two times we played Akron is the first time we played him, McAdams had 12. He was averaging at the time four. He had four or five threes. The second time, Kretzer had 19 in an overtime loss. It's the good players are the good players. They haven't beaten us by Zeke Moore. He's a great player. It's going to be hard to stop him. You know, it's going to be hard to stop those guys. From, we have to try to do a great job on those other guys. And the first time we played him, Abreu had 21 points and nine assists. He hurt us. You know what I mean? So it's not one guy going for 50 and getting us. It's going to be, you know, we got to neutralize the other components about them and not have, have let them have career nights as those guys have good nights. And I'm sure they're thinking the same way about our team. Jim, thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody.